I'm back out here with uh, Richard. Richard, uh, you were recently locked up. Um, yeah. The 8th of 7th. On the 7th of January, you were locked up. Um, and then on the 10th of January, I went to go see your grandfather because he was by himself. Uh, ended up getting him some, uh, some pull-ups, right? Uh, adult briefs. Because uh, that's what he asked for. That's what he needs. He said that you're the one that provided those for him. And since you weren't there, he was asking me if I could get him some. And uh, uh, who donated a uh, Yosmara? Uh, my orthodontist. She she was nice enough to donate to go get some uh, some adult briefs. Okay, so he was happy with that. And what happened? Like, how long were you in there for? Well, it was like most of them. A week or two, a week ago, I guess, I believe. Um, uh, I relapsed. You know, I had a lot of things going on. I just recently found out my, his mom, and he doesn't know about it yet, but she's not really doing too well. And I hate to say it, but I believe she's in her, in her last, um, the last day she's in her on her own um, her deathbed right now that's my great my great grandma um i'm not going to um so yeah i got a lot of things going on right now just with that so i just relapse but everything happens for a reason i guess so that day that i relapsed is also the day that i got caught up um i got caught smoking and I got my wrist and I got taken in. So, because I smoke, it's right there um, where I used to stay at by Thomas. And I was recently on my way back from the bank, taking some money up. My grandfather go, you know, take care of some things. And I chose to fall asleep right there in front of the bank. My grandpa tried waking me up. I didn't wake up, but he took off. So, I looked down the street as I woke up. I see he's like 10 minutes down away from me, so I just kept walking, do my own thing, I'll catch up to him. Uh, and then across the street, I decided to you know, take a couple of hits. And next thing you know, I wake up to an officer trying to arrest me. So he detained me, put me in the back of the, the car. He looked up on my name and seen that I had a a warrant for not paying a ticket or not going to court to pay a ticket or a trespassing fine so he took me in and I believe on the 8th day 8th or ninth day um I had court so they told me I had two options because I was also on probation, probation violation. And they told me that you can play non guilty to this ticket or guilty. Well, they, they, I talked to like some random lawyer, he told me, um, plead non guilty. And I looked at him because he knew that I was, I was coming down. I was hurting and like, he, he could see it. So I kind of had the, that vibe and that look, like, because plus that look he had on his face, he wanted me just to plead non guilty so I could do more time. Um, so I, I kind of studied, I did my homework, I asked people around. He told, they, they told me you know, I was in the same place when he got arrested in the lot and I believe um, guilty, they let me out. And whoever you're talking to, he's telling you more time. So, I did that, and literally the next day, the following day, I got out. They told me if I would have pleaded non guilty, I would have been in there for like at least another 30 days. So, it's a good thing too, because what was going on right now with my, my nana, my grandpa only, he only thinks that she's in, in a nursing home right now. 
But she's actually more in, like in the hospital, I believe. How old is she? Uh, my grandpa's 19, well, my grandpa's 45. And she's like in her 90s or 80s. So, your grandfather is how old? 45. 1940, oh, he was born in 1945, so he's 81. Okay, so I believe he told me he was 71 or something, but I'm not sure, right? Um, so how was your grandfather surviving out here without your help? Because he's very dependent on you, right? You're the one that uh, pushes him around and is uh, he's in a wheelchair, he's disabled. So you push him around, you get him food, you uh, help him change, you change him in and out of his uh, his pull-ups, adult briefs, you help him with that. Who was helping him during that though that week or two weeks that you were locked up? Um, it's, good, it's good to say that there are still good people out there, you know, and that you can have some friends that you can actually trust. I'm not gonna go around you know, exposing him and putting him down, but um, there's um, there's a couple homies I have that I trust, but I tell them, you know, like as it is and how it is, how it should be, you know, like we have each other. I could say friends that I can actually call more like family than actually family, not being family. Um, but uh, we have friends. They push him around too. You know, if I'm not around, I'm happy to be asleep or if I'm really tired. If I need to take a break, because it stresses me out a lot. So when my homies see me like that, I say, hey, bro, you know, you know, go lay down for a little bit. I got you. I'll take care of you a little bit. I got I'll take a day off or something. All right, cool. So. That's what I do. When you were, uh, when you got locked up, did they give you any type of treatment options? Did they say, hey, Richard, um, you know, do you want to go to treatment? Uh, uh, do they give you medication for they, withdrawals in there? Anything at all? They gave me some medicine, but <laughs> it don't even work. It's like, it helps just for the time being, just so that, so that your mind, your conscience, my mentality type type thing. They just give you Tylenol and because I had my uh, restless leg, I can't sleep very well. And when, especially if you're coming off of the, the blue and you have restless leg, restless leg, it's it's hell. You cannot sleep at all. And it's just as bad when you're having withdrawals from aches and chills and all that. But um. With uh, treatment, nah, that's just, it's up to you. You gotta talk to you know, your your counselor, I believe, or I don't know. I believe it's your counselor, but um, I know here in a couple of days, from the grace, from the grace of God, um, I have some numbers I can call that I'm gonna go to a, um, a housing, a sober housing, a sober home. Um, I forgot what kind of, what kind of, what, what it's called, but it's, I know it's a house, it's housing. So uh, Richard, so this time you're gone for a week, week and a half. What if they, in the future, you get locked up for a month, for months, six months, a year? Have you thought about what will happen to your grandfather? Because it's great that you say you have friends out here that they're like family, they'll help your grandfather, but will they be there every single day, all the time? You know? I already know. I, I've thought about it. You know, there's. It has not like it hasn't came, came through my mind. Because, you know, I do got some big charges on me. Especially with that one that happened several years back. Um, or the probation violation. But, uh, I just, I mean, I'm called, but I'm not exactly enrolled into uh, probation yet. They know I'm supposed to be on probation. 
several other people that can take can take a place, take a spot that's willing to do more than I have or, or anybody else has, especially if it's willing for more for a long period of time. Do you think it's time to go to treatment like now? As yeah. opposed to as a as opposed to waiting until I mean, how things on right now and everybody that I know over there is not even there anymore. They all went to a housing program, to a, a sober home. They're they're working on staying. If you stay there for no more for more than three months or more, and go to you know simple classes every day and meetings, participate, and and you're presentable. Yeah. Well then, within three months, if I'm right, if I'm correct. They'll find you either uh, an apartment or a home. Okay. And they'll pay everything off for um, for a year. Okay. So <clears throat> that's a good deal. Um, you should really think about getting into treatment ASAP. Get better. Get well. Uh, and uh, you know, helping out your grandfather because you you guys can't continue this long term. Like this lifestyle, it's it's just not gonna work out long term for either one of you. Yeah. He's aging, he's disabled, right? You're still young, but eventually, abusing substances is gonna affect you mentally, physically, right? Don't you feel it? Don't you feel different now than you did three years ago, yeah. right? Physically, mentally, so it's just taking, it's taxing your your body, right? Your mind. So now's the time. Okay, because if you're you're locked up for an extended period of time, months, what's gonna happen to your elderly grandfather that needs help, right? So uh, you guys should really talk to each other and really lift each other up and try to live a better life, okay? Uh, Manuel, how are you? Oh, all right, all right. You doing good? Yeah, yeah, your mom. Are you uh, happy that uh, Richard is out? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, he's able to help you now, right? Pardon me? He's able to help you now, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, hopefully you guys can help each other and kind of get out of here. Go get, seek treatment because uh, it's really hard out here, okay? So, yeah, uh, it's it's very, very hard. Very hard. So uh, stay safe, guys. I'll come check on you uh, soon, okay? Yeah, sure. 